Hello and welcome to Astrum. Today we're going to be talking about Mars and its moons. Now I'll try and keep these picture images actual images and as unedited as possible, but there will be slight color enhancements, but that's really about it. Now Mars is absolutely beautiful and it's why I picked this planet first for this channel. It has many interesting geological features, ice caps, thin atmosphere, its climate and its orbit are all things we'll talk about today. But let's begin with actually how beautiful Mars is. Now take a look at some of these pictures. Has that got your attention? Good. Now let's actually learn a little bit about Mars so we can put some context to these pictures. Surprisingly, Earth and Mars share a lot of similarities, one being the length of the day. The solar day on Mars is only slightly longer than it is on Earth, 24 hours, 39 minutes and 35 seconds. Because Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun, it's further away than Earth is to the Sun. And so a year is naturally slightly longer. It's 1.88 Earth years, or one year, 320 days and 18.2 hours. Want to see Earth from Mars? Well, take a look at this picture. A number of photos have been taken of Earth from Mars, and here's one from an orbiter which is going around Mars right now. This was taken at a distance of about 80 million kilometers. So it looks quite small and a bit blurry, but that's understandable really. What you can see in this picture though is the Western Hemisphere, and obviously the Moon in the distance. Here's another picture, this time taken from the Curiosity rover. It's just a tiny little dot in the middle of this picture here. Mars is smaller than Earth, and not only that, but Earth is much more dense, meaning the gravitational pull at the surface is much weaker than that on Earth. Let's compare. On the left we have Earth and on the right we have Mars. And as you can see, it does fall slower on Mars than it does on Earth. What's also interesting to know, if you weighed 100 kilograms on Earth, you'd only weigh 38 kilograms on Mars. Mercury, even though it's smaller than Mars, has about the same gravitational pull at the surface. That of Mars is only stronger by 1% and that's due to its density. Mars has two known moons, Phobos and Deimos, which are small and irregularly shaped. Compared to the moon, they're very small. If you were to look up in the sky on Mars, this is about how big they would be in comparison to what the moon looks like in our sky. Phobos is the biggest of Mars's moon and is also the closest, so it looks quite big in the sky even though it's nowhere near as big as our moon which is quite far away in comparison. Deimos on the other hand is very small and also very far away, so it looks like just a star orbiting the planet. I think you'll agree though, they're very pretty moons, even if they are tiny. And I'm not done with them just yet. I want to show you something which I found absolutely amazing the first time I saw it. It's a solar eclipse of Phobos as taken from one of the rovers on Mars. Now I've barely seen a solar eclipse while I've been on Earth, so to see one on Mars, that's just something else. And not only that, but you can see Phobos in all of its irregular glory as it passes by the sun. You can see that it does have an effect on the lighting in the area too. Everything goes a bit darker as it goes past. Of all the planets in the solar system, the seasons of Mars are the most Earth-like due to the similar tilts of the two planets' rotational axis. So what does that imply? Well, Mars has summers and winters, just like us. These temperatures in the different seasons can vary quite a lot, from minus 143 degrees centigrade at the polar winter caps to highs of up to 35 degrees centigrade in the equatorial summer. And as you've already seen, yes, Mars does have polar caps. Mars has two permanent polar caps. During the pole's winter, it lies in continuous darkness, just like on Earth, and actually causing the atmosphere to freeze into slabs of CO2 ice. The permanent polar caps, though, consist primarily of water ice. In this short video, you can actually see the differences of the size of the polar cap from the cap's winter to the cap's summer. Both of the poles show signs of these spirals in the ice. Scientists believe it's because of the Coriolis effect. When the dry ice finally sublimes from the polar ice caps, it can create enormous wind speeds of up to 400 km an hour. Why is Mars called the Red Planet? It's because there's a lot of iron oxide on its surface, which gives it this reddish appearance. It's like there's a lot of rust everywhere. 
And as you can see from photos from the rovers on Mars, everything really is very reddish brown. And they're available on NASA's website as full high definition pictures. You can really see such good detail in these photos to the individual rocks. To the way the landscape is, to what it would look like if you were standing on Mars. What's even more amazing to me is that these last images were taken over 40 years ago with the Viking mission. Now after looking at some of these pictures you might be tempted to think that the red planet is a dead planet when actually that's far from the case. Mars is very active and there's lots of things happening on its surface. Okay, yeah, not as active as Earth, but for a planet with no life on it, there's certainly a lot going on. For example, have a look at this avalanche which happened. In 2008, as an orbiter was going past, what was caught on camera was very surprising. They could see a lot of dust which was kicked up by fallen dirt. What you're looking at here are some dunes which are up to 700 meters tall, and this picture is about 4 miles wide, so you can see that this dust cloud is not exactly small. Here's a dune which was photographed many times over the course of a year, and you can see that it does change quite a lot. You can see the ridges which become more apparent as the dust gets worn away. Now I know I've shown a number of pictures of fresh impact craters so far where you can see the dust has been kicked up from the impact. This one is particularly interesting because after the impact, water ice in the ground melted and you can see the trail as it flowed away from the impact crater. The colors there are just to show depth, they're not true colors. And what do you think caused these patterns on the surface of Mars? Amazingly, they're caused by dust devils. These mini tornadoes are surprisingly common on Mars and have been photographed many times. Here we can see some from the orbiter's point of view. It's estimated that this plume is over 800 meters high and about 30 meters thick. And the shadow of this dust devil is about two kilometers across. And from the rover's perspective, we're actually fortunate enough to have a film of dust devils going past. Mars is known for having huge dust storms. When fast winds pass over the surface, they pick up a lot of the loose dust which is on the ground, creating huge walls which can pass over the whole planet. These storms can very easily be seen from space. Have a look at this dust storm which was captured in 2012. And then only a week later, you can see the difference as it's died down. And on this photo, if you look at the North Pole, you'll see the storm which has passed over the top. But I'm digressing. Let's have a look again at the geological features of Mars. And most notably, this one which stretches across the side of the planet, this giant scar. It's called Valles Marineris. And every time I look at it, I can't help remind myself of Mass Effect. Those of you who played the game will know why. Now this giant canyon is three times the length of Earth's Grand Canyon and four times as deep. Mars has another very interesting feature on it, that of Olympus Mons which is the second tallest mountain in the solar system and the tallest volcano. The fact is not the tallest mountain, to me it's a bit of a cheat. The tallest mountain is found on an asteroid called Vesta and it rises 23 kilometers from the bottom of the crater floor. But we can look at Vesta another time. Olympus Mons stands three times as tall as Mount Everest's high point above sea level. But whereas Everest is very jagged and steep, the edifice of Olympus Mons is over 600 kilometers wide. It rises to the equivalent of 22 kilometers above sea level, which would be impossible on Earth as Earth's gravity would pull it down. The only reason a structure like this is standing on Mars is because its gravity is reasonably weak. Because it is a shield volcano, it has a very low profile. The average slope is only five degrees, which means if you were to stand on the top, you wouldn't be able to see the entire mountain due to the curvature of the planet. Olympus Mons can easily be seen from space. If we look at the topographic map, you can see it quite clearly. To me, it really does look like a giant pimple on the side of the planet. The center of the volcano has some collapsed craters, as you can see, and the outline of the volcano is this giant cliff face, which is up to eight kilometers high. Scientists believe that Mars lost its magnetosphere four billion years ago, which basically means solar winds have been stripping away atoms from the outer atmosphere. Some orbiters on Mars have actually detected these ionized atmospheric particles trailing off into space behind Mars. We are 38,000 feet in the air right now above ground level and the air here is very very thin. If I was to go out of the plane right now not only would I fall to my death but I would also struggle to breathe along the way. Now Mars is a bit 
it like this. Except even worse. If I was to actually get the same sort of um, atmosphere pressure as Mars, I need to go about 120,000 feet into the Earth's atmosphere to get a similar sort of level. The breathing issue isn't helped either by the fact that 96% of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. So basically, if you did want to visit Mars, you'd have to wear a pressure suit. Thankfully though, that doesn't stop Mars from having some absolutely beautiful sunsets, some of which have actually been captured by the rovers on Mars. Now there's still a lot to be learned about Mars. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section, and I or someone else will try and answer to the best of our abilities. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I would really appreciate it that if you enjoyed it or if you found it interesting, please share and like this video so I'll be able to make more in the future. There's still so many planets to learn about in this solar system and I plan to do a video for each one. Subscribe and you'll be the first ones to see them.